Hello gentle viewers, this is of Indian, welcoming you to a special edition of Out of the Park Baseball 18. Um, thanks to one of our British commenters, Head Opener, which seems a very strange name to me, but I'm not here to judge. Um, of Indian, certainly not the most brilliant name either. Either. Um, we're going to be doing a short series, maybe it takes a week, maybe a little bit longer, in which we're going to be talking about the basics of baseball. So if you already know how baseball works, you can skip this video. Um, next video, I'm going to talk about statistics in a lot more detail. Um, Wednesday's video, at least to a certain degree, will include some basic strategy on how to evaluate hitters. Thursday will be how to evaluate pitchers. And then Friday, I haven't really decided what we'll do for that. Maybe talk about contracts. I mean, it's hard to say I can, I can go half an hour just on contracts. I probably could, but I kind of don't want to. Um, so we're going to begin by assuming, dear viewer, that you've never seen a baseball game before in your life. You're like, what the hell is baseball? What is the objective of baseball? How does baseball work? Um, what you see in front of you is an exhibition game that I've created with the glorious St. Louis Browns, our beloved home team, and the dreaded Philadelphia Athletics, who are clearly the purest form of evil, at least in this universe. So the easiest way, I think, rather than going through all the rules of baseball, which can be somewhat difficult, we're going to talk first about the field. Um, every baseball field in America, if it's a regular baseball field, is a square, a diamond, if you will, that is 90 feet by 90 feet by 90 feet by 90 feet. So from, let me see, I think I can turn these labels off. Uh, we'll just use a small labels. I should make it easier to see the field. That's much better, okay. So if you follow my pointer, if we see where the catcher is standing, Saltscaver, from here to first base is 90 feet. First base to second base, 90 feet. Second base to third base, 90 feet. And third place to home plate, again, 90 feet. For those of you who are, of course, not American and don't know what a foot is, um, we're talking roughly 30 meters. It's not an exact science. So it's roughly 30 meters by 30 meters by 30 meters by 30 meters. It is a square. Um, a diamond, technically, but you can kind of shift your perspective and it becomes a square. The basic objective of baseball is to get the hitter from the batter's box. So if you're a right-handed batter, you stand in this box, as our good friend Hodap is. He is indeed a right-handed hitter. Or the left-handed, and we can talk about that. That's a pretty advanced strategy thing that I don't think we'll cover this time. Um, to get from here to here to here to here. Um... And so we're going to focus, now that you kind of know how the stadium is. Now, the rest of the stadium is pretty much different in every part. So these two long white lines here and here up to these yellow poles, which you can barely see, um, are, the fa are the foul lines. So anything that is hit below or outside this line, so anything in this area, for example, is a foul ball. And a foul ball essentially doesn't count. It kind of does, but again, we'll get into that. We want to get just the basics, of orient yourselves on the field. Everything within the foul lines, which includes the foul poles itself, by the way, is fair territory. If you hit a baseball in one of this vast amount of area, it's in play. You don't set over the back wall, which is a home run, um, in which case you automatically score a run. But... We'll cover that when we talk about batters and pitchers. Again, I'm just trying to orient you here with what a stadium looks like. They all look roughly this shape, but there's no regulation. There's a minimum size for a ballpark, but there's no maximum. And lots of things go into account when deciding, you know, how many people do we want in our ballpark? Do we want fans to be close to the field or far away from the field? If they're farther away from the field, you can put more people in the seats. But people might be less likely to come because they can't see very much. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing baseball games from all different parts. Um, usually your cheaper seats are back here in right field. Uh, we call these bleachers. 
I don't know why there's a reason for it. I don't remember what it is. I've been right behind home plate. I've been on the first baseline. I've been on the third baseline. Um, there's all different places to watch a baseball game. For the purpose of OTP, it doesn't matter. Um, but what you do want to know is that every field has different dimensions, which means it's harder to hit home runs in some places than it is in others. Um, I don't think it'll talk about our ballpark here. Um, it does not. So, um, But different ones have different things. Sometimes actually painted on the walls in real stadiums. Like it'll say like 405, and that means it's 405 feet. Um, or about 120 meters um, between home plate and being outside the stadium. Um, but apart from this part here is strictly measured. It's 60 feet 6 inches, about 20 meters or so, from the pitcher's mound, the part in the center, to home plate. That's always the same in every stadium, can't be changed. Um, the height of the pitcher's mound is like... I don't remember off the top of my head. It's between 5 and 10 feet. I don't remember. So between, say, 2 meters and 3 meters. Um, that's always the same. The bases have to be a certain size. The baseball itself has to be a certain size. If you've never held a baseball in your hands, a baseball weighs... It's not very big. It's much less than a kilo. Maybe like 250 grams... 300, 400, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, a lovely turn of phrase if I do say it myself. Right. So that part is always the same in every game, or it's supposed to be. Distance between the bases, pitcher's mound to home plate. Um, this part, what we call the the infield or the diamond, this is always the same. There's even a special kind of mud from the state of Kentucky that you use for the infield. For this uh, dirt here. It has to be the specific kind. I don't know why. It's one of the weird things in baseball. Which is based entirely upon tradition. And not on good logical sense. We're Americans. We, we like things that are a little bit weird. Um, grass has to be clipped to a certain height. Um, there's all kinds of other rules that are in there. That are really important to enjoy the game of baseball. But as you watch and play. And learn about baseball. You'll... It's hard to pick up the nuances. Um, artificial turf was a big thing. I don't think any stadium in the majors will use artificial turf. Um, but it's basically the stuff, like if you've ever run track, um, or if you've played football, American football, a lot of American football teams still use the artificial turf. It's very rubbery, very bouncy. Um, it's not actual grass. It's, it's rubber, basically, with a plastic grass. But... I feel like we've kind of lost track right now, so let's focus back on what matters, which is understanding the basics of baseball. So I'm going to do one pitch and one pitch only as a, as a demonstration of how the game works. So the most important matchup in any game is between the pitcher, in this case Mel Harder, for the good guys, and the hitter, in this case Johnny Hodap, for the bad guys. This is the quintessential heart of understanding the baseball game. This is why whenever you watch baseball on TV, the camera's always behind the pitcher. Um, so you can see what the ball is doing and then whether it gets hit or not. So when the pitcher throws the ball, it's either hit or it's not. So let's throw a pitch and talk about what happened. So I'm just going to tell him to pitch and there's this all doesn't kind of matter. Because we're going to focus mostly on... Oh no, he just pitched the entire at-bat. That wasn't just one thing. Things are happening. I'm sorry. It's not my intent. Okay. That was a fly ball out. Um, bad example. There we go. Switch to pitch by pitch. There we go. So I'm going to tell him to throw one pitch. Okay. So this yellow box is called the strike zone. And this is one of the most important things in Major League Baseball. This is one of those things that should be consistent all the time, but it really depends on the umpire. Um, so picture yourself, if you will, a baseball player, and imagine a box where the line goes from his belt to the top of the letters, I'll be honest, the nipples, um... And within the, eh, no, last, it's the knees. Uh, it's the knees to the nipples. 
Um, so the knees would be here. The nipples would be up here. They say the letters because if you look at a baseball jersey, it's where the letters are that say the name of the team. Um, but anatomically, it's the nipples. I don't know why they decided to do it. They just did. So that's the first part of this line. Then it stretches across to the other side of the plate. And then you get another one at the end there. Any pitch thrown within this uh, strike zone, if it isn't swung at, is a strike. Three strikes, you go back to the dugout, which is right over here. Um, and then you're out. There's three outs in an inning. Three outs in a half inning, excuse me. Um, and every team gets nine innings. So if you've played or watched cricket, it's a little bit like cricket, except cricket can literally last forever. Baseball does end. Um, it doesn't seem that way if you're, say, watching two really bad teams in the middle of May, but it does end. Okay. So, anything thrown outside this box, if it isn't, if it isn't swung at, is a ball. Inside the box, strike. Outside the box, ball. Four balls, and you go to first base. Or first base is occupied, you go to second, and so on and so forth. You can score a run simply through walks. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So, this all assumes we don't even have a hitter. The hitter's not doing anything. He's just staring at the baseball. Um, he's not swinging at it for whatever reason. So either three strikes, he goes back to the dugout, or four balls, he takes his base. There's one other possible outcome if the batter doesn't swing, and that's if the ball actually hits the batter. Um, if the ball hits the batter, he goes. it's the same thing as a walk, basically. Um, and back in the 1920s, as a bit of baseball history, this actually killed someone. Someone got hit in the temple uh, right before they started using batting helmets, and it killed him. Um, and that's why you wear batting helmets, even if you're just in something simple as a batting cage and you're just learning how to play the game. That's a big chunk of baseball already. So I'm going to repeat that to make sure that it's crystal clear. Pitcher throws a ball, and the batter doesn't swing. We're assuming the batter doesn't swing right now. Um, if it's in the yellow box, it's a strike. If it's outside the yellow box, it's a ball. Um, four balls, go to first base, or whatever base is open. Three strikes, you're out. That's it. Um, in this case, we know the batter didn't swing because it's called a called strike because the umpire made the call. So in this case, we have what's called the pitch count, and the pitching count is very helpful. It tells you how the individual at bat is going. Zero, one, the first number, zero, is the number of balls. Second number, one, is the number of strikes. So we already know that uh, Goose Gosselin has one strike, which means he's only got two more to go. Make sense? I hope it makes sense because this is the basis of baseball. Basis of baseball. I'm sorry, that was really poorly worded. It's the fundamentals of baseball. Um, and we're not even talking about the hitter yet. This is just the pitcher. Now, there's different pitches that do different things when the ball is thrown. Um, it's not really well represented in OOTP because you can't actually see the motion of the pitch. Um... For example, a slider um, slides across the plate, and it goes uh, either left to right or right to left, depending on what kind of pitcher you are. If you're a right-handed pitcher like Mel Harder, it's going to break from right to left. If you're a left-handed pitcher, it breaks from left to right. Um, and it's 86 miles an hour. Um, I'm just going to stop with the metric equivalence because I don't know the metric system that well. I apologize. You can kind of learn it on your own if you want. Um, I could even turn on the metric measurements, but then I would get confused. Um, and if I get confused, the video is kind of crappy. So There's lots of other different pitches, and I won't go into a huge amount on that, except when we talk about evaluating pitchers um, in a couple of days. Okay, one pitch down. Let's do another. I'm going to tell him just to pitch again, and we'll see what Gosselin does. Okay, this time we have a ball. You'll notice it's outside the yellow box. His curve ball did not go where it was supposed to. And thus, we have a one and one count. Let's continue. Okay, this is another called strike. This is what I mean when I say umpires can be fidgety. 
Um, this ball just barely nicks the box. Some umpires will call us a ball, some will call it a strike. This is how real life works. It's how o OOTP works. Um, it's just part of baseball life. Um, it's supposed to be the same for everybody, and it's not. Um, which makes it a very irritating time as we're playing the game, but every umpire will call this a strike. Every umpire will call this a ball. This is borderline. It is a strike. You can tell it nicks the strike zone, but there you have it. Okay, so he's got one ball, two strikes. Let's see what happens next. He swung and missed. Um, if the batter swings and doesn't connect the ball, it makes no difference where it is in the strike zone. It's a strike. Because he tried to strike at the baseball. Makes sense? So Goose Goslin goes back to the dugout, and he is struck out. So it's already two outs, because we saw the first one happen. Um, so Philadelphia is going to get one more chance to try to make something. And this is Lou Gehrig. If you don't know baseball, Lou Gehrig is one of the best players of all time. Um, and we're going to tell him just to pitch normally. We don't care who wins this game. This is designed to teach you how baseball works. So remember, if the batter swings at any ball, anywhere, and misses, it's a strike. Inside the yellow box, outside the yellow box, it's a strike. Let's try another pitch. This is going to be a ball. Pretty far inside. This is actually somewhat close to hitting in um, in real life. Let's try again. Man, this is another one. He's shaving the strike zone. It's really good if you can do that consistently, and the best pitchers can. Um, okay. Big thing just happened there. Big thing just happened that we really need to talk about. So here's a baseball. If you hit the ball, you make contact, but it goes into foul territory, it is a strike. But you cannot strike out that way. So what will happen is if his next pitch, he also hits it into foul territory. Again, anywhere here. Not kind of the line itself. If it lands on the line, it's fair. It has to be south of the line, um, if you will. Anywhere in this area, it's a strike. There, however, you can't strike out that way. So what that means is that if he hits another foul ball, he doesn't strike out. It's just two strikes again. So this is how you can get really long at bats, like 25 pitch at bats. Not very common. Extremely rare, but they do happen. And it's because he fouled off pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch. And every pitcher on planet Earth can only throw so many pitches before he starts to get tired. When he gets tired, he makes bad decisions. Lou Gehrig. So, if you see the center square here, the game very helpfully divides it into nine squares. This is a perfect place for almost any hitter to crush the ball. And Lou Gehrig didn't hit. This is a very lucky hit for the pitcher. Not so much for Lou Gehrig. So, let's see what happens next. Another ball. Um, so, you got two and two. And you notice this is way off the zone. Way off the zone. Okay. And we have our first base hit. So we didn't hit it foul and nobody caught it. That makes it a fair ball. And in this case it's a single because it's only one base. So if you hit the ball into fair territory, any of the um, defensive team can catch it. We have the left fielder here. Center field. Eh, let's let them return to their normal positions. It's easier to see them. Okay. So we now have Lou Gehrig on first. We'll talk about what that means here in a minute. So we have our left fielder, uh, Lou Fonseca. Center fielder, uh, Fred Schulte. Our right fielder, Bruce Campbell. Not the guy from Evil Dead, a different Bruce Campbell. And depending on where, what kind of hitter it is, they'll send in roughly different places. But these three guys are responsible for everything... In the grass here, basically. So you got to be really, really fast. you got to be really, really good at reading what happens to the ball when it's hit off the bat. If they catch it, it's an out. The guys on the infield can also try to catch it, which includes the third baseman, the shortstop, always between third and second, second baseman, always between second and first. You'd think he'd stand on the second base bag. He doesn't, and there's a reason for that. 
First baseman, always on the first base bag, especially when there's a runner on first. Your catcher, behind the plate. And then, of course, the pitcher himself can also catch the ball. So if the ball is hit into the air and somebody catches it, it's an out. I shouldn't say somebody like a coach could catch it and it wouldn't matter. But any of the people on the field could catch it. It would be an out. Simple enough. If you don't catch it, it's where things get interesting. Um, in this case, he hit the ball and it landed here. Um, so the second baseman couldn't have gotten to it. The right fielder couldn't have gotten to it. So it just kind of bounced there. The right fielder got it and he threw it into the infield. Um, until the umpire calls the play dead, um, the play continues. But most professional baseball players know that it's really a bad idea to try to run when the right fielder has a ball. Because I feel like you've got a pretty good arm. Once you pick up the ball, you can throw it. If you throw it, and let's say the second baseman is here, where my mouse pointer is, which is second base. If he throws the ball to second base, the second baseman can try to tag the runner if he's trying to run to second base. He's safe at first, so this might be a little bit easier when we actually see base runners do things. Most importantly right now is what's called the force out. Which means the first baseman has to run to second. He doesn't have a choice. If the ball is hit fair, he has to run to second. Because if he didn't, you'd get two batters on first base, and that can't happen. One of them will be out, guaranteed. So what that means is he could hit it to the shortstop who doesn't catch it, but he just flips it over to the second baseman, and it's still an out because it's a force out. The batter has no choice. He has to run to second. He could run past second if he wanted to, but he has to at least run to second because you can't have two people on the same base. Got it? I hope you do. I have no way of knowing whether you do or not. Um, so let's see what happens um, in this next time. So Dom D'Alessandro takes a pitch. It's a strike. So ball. Notice the catcher move. So this is another interesting element of baseball. And it's either called the passed ball or the wild pitch. The difference is subtle. It's basically whether the official scorer for the game thinks it's the pitcher's fault or the catcher's fault. If the pitcher throws the ball and the catcher doesn't catch it for whatever reason, the base runners can run as far as they want to. Unless it goes into the stains, in which case they get one free base and it stops. Um, this can be a way for runs to score. Um, so let's see what happens next. Pitch. Mel Harder's having a very difficult time finding the strike zone. So if we look, there should be somewhere where we can see how many balls and strikes he's thrown. Come on, every other bloody thing on here. You can look at it in the box score. Pitch again. Okay, so we're going to see what the right fielder does. That's foul. But he caught it anyway. If you catch the ball in foul territory... No, he didn't catch it. So yeah, it was a foul ball. He didn't reach it. But if you catch the ball in foul territory, it's still one out. Um, so now he just goes right back to first base. So you notice Garrick had to run. Even though he didn't know where the ball was going to end up. And he struck out looking. So that's the end of the side. So the runner is stuck on first base. They go back to the dugout. And we switch sides. That was the first half inning of play. So one team gets a turn, other team gets a turn, that's an inning. Okay. So now we're up to hit, and so we have some different options. And I will talk about game strategy in a different episode. I think that's a good thing to talk about. But I just want to make sure we understand the basic rules of baseball. Um, we're just going to tell them, swing away. And we're doing one pitch at a time. We won't do this forever, though. That's a, swing, that's a ball. That's actually two balls, sorry. Three balls. This pitcher is nowhere near the strike zone. So I'm going to tell him to take the pitch. It was right down the middle, but I told him to take it because I wanted him to draw a walk if he could. Now I'll just tell him to do what you want. This is probably going to get caught. Yep. Center fielder made it. It's an out. If the ball is caught by on a fly ball, it's called the fly out. It doesn't matter where it's caught, it's a fly out. 
There's also ground outs, but for that we need runners on base. Oh, and one for Woody English. And he just got hit by the pitch, so he goes right to first base. Um, if the umpire thinks you're doing this deliberately, like let's say maybe you're angry because you had a home run off your last inning, um, they can throw the pitcher out of the game. Um, and this happens probably once or twice a week. So we've got a runner on first. Now we have additional options now because runners can do what's called stealing bases. The runners can run anytime they want to until the batter hits the ball. So I could make him try to steal, run for second, and he's going to wait till the pitcher throws a ball, and he's going to run as fast as he can. You can run while the pitcher still has a ball, but it's really stupid, and you just get thrown out. Um, let's tell him to steal, even though I know he's pretty slow, actually. Uh, yeah, he's pretty slow, but we're going to tell him to do just to see what happens. We're going to tell him to uh, try to steal second. Here he goes. Catcher throws it. A successful steal. So the catcher throws it, and the second baseman, or in this case a shortstop, because of where the ball was thrown, has to catch the ball and touch the base, touch the base runner. If he does, he's out. If it's not, it's a stolen base. So Woody English is now on second. Tell Bruce Campbell to swing away. Takes a strike, swing away. Swings and misses. This is bad. He's going to... Strike out. No. Ooh. That should have been a strikeout. That was really close. Let's see if he gets a strike zone. He hit it backward. Notice, like I said earlier, two strikes. He hit the ball. It's a foul ball, but it's not a strikeout. You can do that infinite times as long as you just keep hitting a foul. That's a ball. Very good job. We're making him work here. Now let's see what Campbell can do with this pitch. He hit it, but that's going to be a foul ball again. So we do it again. So we've already had seven pitches in this at bat. Up. Okay, that was a fly out. I know you couldn't see it, and I apologize for that. The first baseman caught that in foul territory, which just makes it an out. Okay, strike. He hit it. Where'd he go? Okay, so it was a ground out. So I know how to read baseball um, scoring. So this means he grounded the ball to number three, and number three is the first baseman, and the first baseman threw it to the second baseman, number four. Um, so what he probably did, um, why would it be three, four? It should be four, three. That's really weird. That might be a mistake. Because that would mean the first baseman threw it to the second base, and that's what 3-4 means. And that doesn't make any sense, because you wouldn't throw it to second, because there's already a runner on second. I wasn't paying attention. I apologize. We'll have to see if something else happens. But it is a ground out. If you pick the ball off the ground, and you throw it to the other bag before you can reach it. Oh, the U is unassisted. Okay, that's the position of the ground ball. I apologize. So you means unassisted, which means he grounded it on the ground of the first baseman. The first baseman picked it up and stepped on first base. As long as you did before the runner gets there, he's out. That's what makes it a ground out. It's also a force out. Um, there's no tag needed. The batter can't decide to go back to home play. That's not how it works. He always has to go forward. It's a nice microcosm for American society, if you think about it. Always going forward. So we have, uh, that was our first complete inning. Baseball has nine innings, unless the game is tied after nine full innings. Um, if the home team is winning, the home team is always the bottom of the two names, um, the second half of the ninth inning doesn't get played. So in that case, instead of 27 outs, it's only 24 um, for one of the sides. It's actually possible there'll be more than three outs in an inning, but it's really weird, and it doesn't happen very often, and it's not worth talking about unless it happens in this game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain what's happening with each at bat now until we run out of time, um, and then we'll we'll see where we're at from there. Because I would like you guys to see an entire game from start to finish.
because there's lots of other movies we can talk about. Uh, Mel Hart is actually pitching really badly. He's right around that dead center of the strike zone, and he's just pitching so slowly that the batters don't know what to do with it. That's a foul ball. Boop, into the stands. That's a lovely souvenir for somebody there. They can take that home, maybe get their favorite player to sign the baseball. 0-2 pitch. That was hit. Center fielder will probably get that. And there he goes. So the center fielder caught it. So F, fly ball out to 8, the center fielder. And this tells you roughly where it is on the field. So 7, 8, D means it's between where left and center field is, and it was deep. Um, this is special notation they use in baseball games, and you don't really need to know that to enjoy the game. Um, Jimmy Dykes is going to take himself a strike. He fouled that off. I gotta really watch the ball. That's another obvious foul ball. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this inning. Um, and I think what we'll do is um, we'll make this the first two episodes, actually. So the first two episodes will actually talk about um, one baseball game, and then once that's done with, because you'll see a lot of different things in a given game. Um, and then after that, you should have a good enough understanding of the basic game of baseball that we can do things like talk about statistics and the other parts of baseball that are more strategic. Um, so we'll finish this inning, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Pitch to Dykes, that's another ball. That's a two and two count. He struck out. Now, if you foul the ball back on the third strike and the catcher catches it, it's still a strikeout. Um, but it has to be fouled off the baseball right into the catcher's glove. If it hits the ground, it's a foul ball. Because the catch is actually in foul territory. Not enough people in modern day baseball are named Moose anymore. Okay, there is no way on earth that should have been a strike. This is a very generous umpire. He struck out two. Okay, if you strike out all three batters, we call it striking out the side. But that is going to be it for this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed it, especially head opener. But anyone else who doesn't understand baseball, um, I hope you found this first half interesting. Um, tomorrow you'll be able to see the second half. And we'll start talking about statistics in episode three. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about batters and pitchers a little bit more in depth and how to evaluate them in, uh, in OOTP. So these first two videos are for people who don't know baseball at all. The next three are, are useful for anyone. Even if you think you know baseball statistics, you don't know baseball statistics. Um, and we'll talk about that later on. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know if there's still something that's unclear about baseball. And I'll make sure to... Uh, I'll make sure to address that in a future video. But until next time, this has been Avindian, and I bid you good day.